I would declare quorum with six of the seven school board <coughs> members here. Approval of the agenda. I don't think there are any changes to the agenda, so I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Workshop and potential referendum. I will turn it over to Dr. Carlson. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. A welcome. Dinner, once again, provided for by our food service. And so um, acknowledge them whenever you see them for that tonight. Um, kind of not on the official end of the agenda, but I was just going to acknowledge Anita and Kate. And um, for you know, if, if everybody did not by chance see your email yesterday, just making everybody aware that uh, Kate and Anita are the lone candidates for the April election. Anita's really depressed about that because so. she wanted to have the forum, so she <laughs> yeah. might need some counseling beyond so. that, but I think it's okay right now. So, right. we'll, okay. work, we'll, we'll work with you. Anyway, so thank you. Thank you. Um, so tonight, we have what I hope to be a very straightforward goal in the end. And it's, again, it's in a draft form to uh, the board. You ultimately can decide how this will go tonight. But the goal for me is to do everything we can so that you as a board would be in a position that by the January 26th school board meeting, you are able to make a decision as a board whether to move forward with referendum questions for an April election or not. So in the end, that's, uh, that's the ultimate goal, to put, put you in a place to be able to do that. And like with anything else, some of you, are, well, we know, you're each perhaps in different places, just uh, on questions, understanding. So that's key to tonight. So we have a plan um, set for tonight, but at any time, we want to make sure that you, at any point, can stop and we can head in a different direction once we get going and do whatever we can so it's benef most beneficial to you in order to achieve that goal. Uh, we have a, as the night goes on, there's some post-its there. If you have a thought, you can just jot it down. But if it's an item that's maybe a little related but separate, we have a parking lot up here. You don't have to get right up and put it up there, but at any point you can uh, put it up and depending on how what time we have, we'll try to come back to it and acknowledge those, or we will follow up after we adjourn tonight. We will end by 8 p.m. unless Cheryl decides differently. <laughs> and um, I want to acknowledge Jay and the group behind you. And by the way, the, the seating tonight, we wanted to keep it as small. We started to set up for everybody, and it, it, it was just getting so large. And then when we set up over there, the big TV monitor is always in the way. So we're trying this. But also there, there is maybe a little bit of advantage seated back there because they may have a need, depending on the discussion, they may be able to talk a little bit amongst themselves too. Um, but they are here as resource to your discussion tonight. There are some activities that are planned that you, may, that you will break out. And even at that point, um, they may then hang around your group and uh, so that they can be helping and respond to questions that you may have. So, um, Dale, are many of those people also helpful that helped with the composition? I want, yes, yeah, so I part of that acknowledgement. is an incredible document. Part of that acknowledgement, I want to begin with, <laughs> I want to begin with Jay and uh, so much of this has been um, uh, really, he's been the person that I've been able to rely on with this and then uh, it's kind of putting the pieces together as well as then utilizing the people behind you and, uh, and that's why they are identified to be here. Wendy Savasky is part of this group as well. She just could not, something came up, she could not be here tonight. We did meet as several of us um, met yesterday afternoon, especially talking about the technology piece, and Wendy was part of that conversation. But thanks to Jay, the group behind you, a lot of work has been, a lot of discussion has been put in 
to just not just preparing for tonight, but that ongoing Q&A document and just a lot of the financial figuring and work with this. So thank you to all of you with that. I, I just appreciate it because Jay has the piece of the brain that I don't have. <coughs> what you do for us to inform us when the public talks to us and asks questions, I'm just so appreciative of that. The same goes for everybody who's behind you too because we rely upon them for their expertise because on an issue as complex as this, no one person, <coughs> and if you've been involved in complex organizations, you know that's true. Yes. And uh, so, so they've challenged <coughs> things that are in here, <coughs> and provided good input, and been very helpful. Yeah. And I can't forget, I mean, Christina, in so many ways of um, just organizing everything for today and uh, much of the work that we've done. But the people behind you, it probably doesn't take a lot to uh, put it together that um, with transportation, <coughs> that piece tonight, Beth is here. With the buildings and grounds, that piece, John is here. And then with the technology piece, looking at Jan and Ryan and Bob. And let me just explain again, right now, the direction that we've been going and moving towards right now with technology is it's concentrated what would what would be going to referendum if that's the decision by the board the focus is more on the middle school and high school at this point that's the work that's been done so that's why ryan and bob are here this evening and we can talk more about that as needed if i may dale um and while these individuals have played specific roles don't don't think that the other leadership team members have not been engaged. We dedicated uh, two full leadership team meetings to making sure that all leadership team members had input um, and offered perspectives and, as I said, challenged this. So uh, it's been the group as a whole. And then, as you all know, that if you're on the Finance Committee or Buildings and Grounds Committee or the Technology Committee, um, it's also gone through some vetting at those uh, stakeholder levels as well. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Jay, who's going to get us started with the presentation and the conversation discussion. And, uh, but this, we want to be pretty informal. And so at any time, ask the questions uh, that you need to, okay? All right. So I'm going to spend five to 10 minutes covering some background to make sure we're all a common starting point. And should this be broadcast, I think it's important that we continue to communicate with our public a little bit of the background so they understand the connection of what's happening tonight with what's happened before tonight. And then I'm going to describe the activity we have planned and give board input on that <coughs> activity to see if they support that or would like to go in a different direction to meet the goal that Dr. Carlson described. So this is a brief statement of the goal that Dr. Carlson did describe um, related to the April 7th potential referendum and the goal is to get the board closer to be able to decide yes or no should we go to a referendum in an effort to meet the fiscal sustainability goal and if yes what will be included in the referendum and then this is that fiscal sustainability goal, which serves as the starting point for um, even considering a possible referendum. The board approved this fiscal sustainability goal. The goal was initially to generate more revenue. The board later agreed to set an amount of revenue to be generated at $263, or approximately $990,000 per year. And the goal setting is a decision already made we're not talking about that tonight. That's not included in our presentation. What we interpreted it administratively that one, we should change our focus to how do we best implement the decision and what can we contribute to achieve the best possible <coughs> outcome related to that decision. So as a foundation for the board, decision making on the fiscal sustainability per pupil dollar amount, we've outlined a potential direction. 
and you've heard this before, generating revenue and applying that revenue to meet school district needs. So we have recommended a referendum as the means to generate the revenue and three areas in which the added revenue would be applied. And those are technology, facility, maintenance, and fleet replacement. <coughs> Wishing to provide the board with rationale, we administratively then contemplated, well, what are the questions that are going to come out of recommending a referendum and focusing on these areas? <coughs> and we use those initial questions to formulate a draft of a question and an, uh, answer document. This has been evolving over recent months. You, <coughs> as board members, had input on that. Whether you knew it or not, you were asking questions. And those questions were supplementing the administratively developed Q&A document. To assist the board in evaluating the administrative recommendation, because a referendum and items to be funded are as an administrative recommendation. Three action steps were implemented. We <coughs> provided the board a copy of the draft Q&A document and asked for a thorough review. Beyond asking for a thorough review, we provided the board members four reflection questions. And the intent of the reflection questions was to promote a most critical review of the direction proposed in the Q&A document. And hopefully this critical review creates an effective and focused review by the board that we can carry into tonight. And then third, this workshop activity was set. Hopefully we'll identify strengths and weaknesses and opportunities to improve the board's ability to achieve back to the fiscal sustainability goal, $263 per pupil. So here's the reflection questions the board were asked to consider as they reviewed the draft Q&A document. First is identify what you believe are the three most important question and answer communications for the public. The second was to identify three of the Q&As that leave you with some degree of uncertainty. You read that and you're just thinking, I'm not sure I get that, I support that, I believe that. Some degree of uncertainty. Third, identify any Q&A <coughs> items you believe are not relevant enough to even include in the Q&A document. And fourth, identify the three most important pieces of information you still need as a board member before considering taking action to advance or not advance a referendum question to the public. And the response to these four reflections has been compiled and would serve as a starting point for the board's work here tonight. So back to the goal that we administratively have laid out. Um, are there any questions before I introduce the activities associated with how we're going to work through those board reflections? You can ask questions at any time. just to give some structure to what we do today. So let me share with you the activities we've planned around each of those questions then. And then we can get started with the activities. So the first question was identify what you believe to be the three most important Q&As contained in that document. And so what I would do for that activity is I would present the board input, the composite list, I'd ask the board members, if they're comfortable, to individually pick any one of the listed Q&As, the ones that you guys identified. <coughs> Try to avoid duplication, other than to say, oh, I think that Tim picked the really the most important one, but I'll go to the second one. Um, and that's not to say in picking one that any of the others are un unimportant, only that you believe that this particular one is noteworthy and more for our community to know. One that you would want to maybe make sure was on the front of a brochure if the board decides to go to a referendum. <coughs> and hopefully this activity would acknowledge what is right about the information that's been presented in the Q&A, and it would serve as a foundation for future decision making. 
That would be the first activity, the activity associated with the first question presented to the board. Uh, qu activity number two. Again, we present you the composite list that was developed by you as board members. In this one, we'd actually give you two dots, the little stick of dots. And what we'd ask you to do is place the dots next to the uh, uncertainty Q&A that to you is of most importance. This one needs to be addressed. You place your two dots. Then we'd select the three that get the most dots and ask board members to work either in a large group or depending upon how many they are, you could break up into small groups and you'd be assigned a task. Create a written record describing why it is important and then how is it going to be addressed. So they don't want to leave here just with why is this uncertainty important, how is it going to be addressed. So we have something to help us move forward. And then if you did do small groups, because you're a full board, not small subgroups, you'd report out what your group did as an activity. The third task for the board was to identify um, any that were not relevant. And again, you'd look at the composite input from your peers on the board, break up the non relevant Q&As to small groups, ask the small groups to evaluate these non-relevant items, you could do it as a large group, and say, if this is so relevant, do we delete it? Or do we modify it because it has some there, it's just not getting the mark? Or should this just be merged with something else? Or you might identify some other solution to this thing that, well, at least initially was taken as non-relevant. And hopefully this will be helpful in moving the board uh, direction as well. The third, what are the three most important still needing to be addressed? Again, starting with familiarizing yourself with the composite list, and then have the board, this one I think should be in large group activity, identify each important piece of information if I don't have this information as a board member, and at this point in time, I'd suggest to you that this thing we still need information on. Again, leaving the meeting tonight with some purposeful direction on these items that still need attention. That's the outline we would present to you for consideration for the rest of the night tonight. Maybe I missed it, but the goal for us to go through these, is it to develop an ass and let me switch. Is it to answer these questions for the board so that we have a um, and can make an informed decision on the twenty sixth? Or is it, because some of those, I was you were talking about merging and things, I'm tr trying to think, is it to develop that Q&A document? I believe it's going to be twofold. I think, I, I hope you would, I don't know how you would separate those two things. If well, the board decides to go forward with this direction, the Q&A document is going to be the foundation for communicating to the public where, where the board's at. But that's just it. It's going to be the foundation, but when you're looking at just in marketing and looking at those kind of things, you're not going to be able to have all of the questions in a document that uh, people are going to read. They're not going to read, you know, so that's what I'm wondering is if we're trying to look at and merge for the purposes of marketing and or information, providing information in a written format. If the, I, I think if the board decides <coughs> to proceed with a referendum, there's going to be plenty of work after that decision is made okay. to develop materials. Okay. Listen, okay. First, first and foremost, this Q&A document from its origin was <coughs> to hopefully help educate and inform you. Okay, that helps. But we're asking for your help to help one another because, again, some of you are at a different place. 
And so, but you're a good, I tell you, you're a good snapshot of the community that you represent as well. So, felt the best place to start in developing this is with you, so to help <coughs> you understand. Is my goal tonight, um, because I like how you just put that, we all represent the people we're supposed to represent, and hopefully a school board has everybody's <coughs> representation there. By the end of this evening, should I be on board with what the board approves? That even if I have a question about the referendum, but if, if, if I have answers that bring it forward that the majority of the board supports this is my objective personally <coughs> to be able to learn how to support that in the community because people often do s shoot us emails and we're trained to say please direct it to so and so you know I, I don't have this but is that part of my goal tonight is to be a united front with what other the decision is and I you're would, helping I, us with I would expect knowledge. you to be a united front on the goal that the board approved just yes. like any good team once the quarterback makes the call whether you agree with it or not once you're at the line of scrimmage you don't decide you want to do something else and you're talking but about the 200 and that's the goal that's been approved you've Regarding taken the referendum you haven't made that decision. Right. And just like our administrative team did a critical review of what was being advanced, this is your turn. So okay, this is more, I guess, I would have to say, to put you individually more in a better place. Yes. And then by January 26, you as a board have also to- as a member of the board, to just be a member of the board. Yeah. So the board makes yeah. a statement and that statement that goes to the press that goes to our citizens they know we've all considered these things we've thought about the options we've asked <coughs> the questions but we still say no i don't support this or yes i do support this so that's kind of where i'm going is this is going to help me do that um hopefully for anybody that you run into in fe at festival or on the street as they should you know they they, they okay. should feel like they that's should, again as jay said that's probably the second part okay. is twofold that comes after you're able as a board to make a decision first gotcha. on january 26th right. but you, you each individually will have that vote without denying the reality that to get up to speed on all this will take time if the board should approve a referendum this is going to be part of your learning curve so it's not so steep so yes kate you're here to ask questions, absorb. I know you've read through the materials already, but um, even people who deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis at an administrative level can't read it once and retain it all. So if the board goes that direction, this would be the starting point for learning. Thank you. <coughs> Good questions. Should we give it a try? We'll kind of get into the first one and see how it's going and, and so dr carlson has some materials for you that we're going to discuss <coughs> and what he's going to give you in case you didn't bring it and i think you only had it electronically and might have printed it off was the full q a because you may be referring to that throughout the night either in small group or large group activities and the other thing we're going to pass out is the cumulative response <coughs> that the board provided to the first of the questions that were presented And so that question was identify what you believe are the three most important Q&As to communicate to the public. like what you have hopefully it's
And let me just describe the layout of this document. So the question, the full question was at the top. And then feedback we received from the board is listed there. And I think verbatim, unless administratively when we reviewed it, we had some question or saw perhaps something that we thought was referenced in a different, it wasn't, it may have been referenced incorrectly. And part of the reason is, <coughs> if you're on the facility committee, if you're on the finance committee, if you revisited the technology committee, we had multiple drafts of this Q&A going on. And I think what some board members did was when the task was delivered to you on December 30th, you may have actually been looking at an earlier draft, and you may have referred to Q, and Q now became Z. And so as we were reviewing the input from the board members, in some cases we thought, um, okay, this must have been from a different draft. So we've made some notes. We've captured your true intent, but the one that you see there, administrative interpretation, is this comment belongs to question HH. And there we're referring to the actual one that we sent with the December 30th, and the one that would correspond to this document you received tonight. Took us a little bit of time to work through interpretations, but I, I think we got it right. <coughs> so that's at the top, and then at the bottom, you'll see the Q&A item, and it's just a question, not the full answer, but you can cross-reference that to this, that the individuals were referring to. So for example, on this one it says references, and it starts with D-F-I-L. Those were the items that board members said are most important for us to communicate to the public. Make sense how that's laid out? The questions of, uh, the input itself captured at the top, the references is just an itemized list of which ones were most important. Make sense? Yeah. So did all seven board members respond to these questions? In one, uh, deal, in one way, shape, or form, I think most, there is some, some type of acknowledgement for most. Some verbal, some in the written form. Um, so it looks like there's only three answers to this yeah. question, and it's kind of disheartening because if this was our homework, we should have done it. Mine was, though, just jumping in there. Um, I didn't do a response in email, a printed thing, but Dale and I had a conversation. Okay. And so he, he, I'm sure he took notes from what yeah. And we did our I best. Said. Yeah. To us, it's kind of like the classroom, while you'd like to get it in written form. Uh, some of the students are really more interested in telling you. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so yes. we, uh, we tried what to accommodate. To us, the, the method of participating wasn't as important as participating. Oh, true. So to that end, as Kate Very mentioned, true. I tell you, please, please, if you know that we did not put something down that you know should have been there, we need that. I mean, I think, so. I, I mean, I don't want to say what you did, but I'm assuming when you were giving phone calls to me about this, yeah. I'm guessing you did that with others that maybe you hadn't heard from. So A little bit. each of yeah. us felt like we were reached out to yeah. if we yeah. hadn't done yeah. that email thing. Yeah. Yes, sir. I have a question as I look at the sheet here. I just want to make sure I understand that this reference is kind of so work with me here look at item L on this sheet yep. that would refer to L being the question why do the referendum questions focus only on needs related technology facility and maintenance is that correct hopefully that matters but it does not match <laughs> the document it's <laughs> because that looks like question K thank you Tim I can't tell you how many times we've been through, through this, this. Question now would be how would the referendum dollar referendum approved dollars be used? I felt like I needed a decoder ring today, and uh, apparently it just, was not working. Correctly. There's been a lot of moving parts. I yes, I haven't. I didn't have the right one. Well, we could just verbally identify it as we go along, can't we? Sure. Mm -hmm. I just skimmed. It looked like the rest were good. That was a bus, though. No, huh? That's not it. Yeah. It should be. That question is K. L is the bus, but the question is right? Well, we got the wrong question, but L was, it was L. We got the wrong question listed here. Is that what every, so if I look at L on here, the reference <coughs> question is incorrect. If you look at L in here, 
This is the correct question. That's what I meant when I put L, yes. Oh, thank you, Anita. Yeah, I, I as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, so on your sheet here, <coughs> so as to not lose what was an error on our part, we'll just strike it. But then we're going to have to put in here, somebody tell me, what is L? How would the referendum approved dollars be used? <coughs> Does what we did there make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I don't suppose we could buy with saying we intentionally did that just to make sure you were part of the Tim was the only one awake. Between Tim and Anita. No. Anita's usually got something. I right? know, but you know <laughs> Thank you. Else's yeah. responses from I usually read everything. So oh, all right, so going to what's what's the activity we're supposed to do here? Ask the board members if they're comfortable to pick any one of the listed Q and A's. Do I have that up there? There it is. That's what we're going to be doing. Avoid duplication. You can say, yeah, I think that what Anita said was really interesting. And then briefly comment on why you believe that item deserves to be identified as most important. And again, not to say that something's unimportant, only to identify some of the most important. And this will acknowledge whether or not we got the right information in the Q and A's and help with future decision making. What the board says are important things to consider. So, does that sound you guys good with that? Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know, Cheryl, where you want to start. If you want to go in roll call order, or. Hey. And people can pass. You can pass. They can pass. Or just discuss. Yeah. Just open discussion. <coughs> Just give you some time to look if you want to look at, but we can kind of go down. Well, I, I can get started pretty easy because you know I already said three, and I, I won't use L because I'll leave that for Anita. <coughs> um, <laughs> um, but I think with the P, um, to me, that's really it, it hits home. You, you boil it all down. What does it mean to the individual taxpayer? And I think that's important to know. You you can't talk generalities or big picture people want to know I think in this day how does it affect me and uh, so I think that is important to communicate and, and you know making sure that we're clear and, and you know being as transparent they want to know and if you don't tell it to them they'll go what are you hiding the full story mm -hmm. on what the tax yes cost anymore. I know you've done like a lot to already do that, but I think the general public, unless you're involved in the repeat conversations, and we are, and sometimes I feel like I don't, I'm confused sometimes with some of the jargon. How do you put that? Yeah, we talk about the elevator conversation. Right. That is, how do you, in the time from first floor to fourth floor, get the person to understand? Now, I believe some area of concerns or uncertainty, you'll see that very comment as one of the items that how do you, and so we have some work to do there. How do we boil that down to the elevator discussion? You're talking to your six-year-old mother. So, yeah, that's what I'm so here's an example, though. Um, what we're trying to do is first, how do you, where are you at with this list to help you make that decision? Even though it's a little bit framed in public, you know, uh, what do you think is most important for the public, but it begins with you as you move forward with this process. I think <coughs> the number one question is D. That as a board member, anybody that I bump into as a citizen needs to know why. I'm voting yes if that's what I do. Why well, I'm voting yes. And within that question, there is a bit of history. 
that we have done the best we can do over the course of the last many, many years with way less money. And I can't remember which one of our legislators said, school board members are notorious for being able to do the best they can do under most adverse circumstances with less and less money every year as we watch costs rise and rise. Some we can't control. Our transportation um, costs, you know, that last question, why we we do what we do. I have been very well versed on why we do what we do. It's the best thing for our district economically. So that's there. We, we've done all of that. So when I look at D, I want to make sure that Joe and Jill, who are looking at a referendum, know that there really is a good reason. We have to come back and ask for more money. And if we don't do it at this point, then you, Joe and Jill, have to decide what you don't want to have in our district anymore. Yeah. And give me some input on that. Yeah. And it just talks about, I don't know if it's that one, but it talks about we kept hoping that just around the corner, That's there'd exactly be a solution. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, as a former treasurer on the school board, and Tim knows this as well as former treasurer, mm -hmm. that Gary's been talking for years about the converging line. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, how do you, with natural inflation and what's happened, how, how do you sustain over? Right. And so when we've talked before, too, about is this referendum a new idea? It really isn't, because we have. We've done a good job projecting to see where emergency is going to come. And we finally have to go, you know, we really don't like to do this, but we're asking for some more money. We've seen it come for a long time. And you know that I've been through it every year, but converging lines for the last five or six years. Yeah. <coughs> they would come. And I have another comment, and it seems to me like D and F are the same question. I kind of have that down too. Why is the district coming for more operation money? This is, why, this is why we need, <coughs> need the money, because if we don't, this is what's going to happen. And say, what's the downside of not, being, of not lowering the money? Well, if we don't get you lower the cost, this is what's going to happen. Well, it's kind of the same question. Okay. <coughs> and that kind of focuses on we have done well with efficiency. That kind of supports D in the same way. Here's what we have done. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a natural flow and connection between those two, if not combined, at least adjacent <coughs> to one another um, with E somewhere else, so that there's a natural flow as people might look to. Thank you. Well, Al seems like part of the answer would be. Yeah. Well, and I am going to steal L and how will the money be used because I do think that that, in my mind, that's the most important question. Um, while we have a public that will consider the other things that impact on them, um, such as question P, I think what we have found historically is if we make our case, if we are able to show that what we're going to use that money for is a good thing, and we make our case to the public, then the impact on their taxes and that is on something they will measure. However, historically, they've been willing to say yes. We do support those initiatives. Um, and so the fact you know, that these are the three things we're looking at are things that have been long time studied, long time um, indicated as a needs, unmet needs, those sorts of things, I think, um, will help us make that case. And um, I think the public, I don't want to say buy into it, but I think they can acknowledge and understand those needs. And they've seen districts like the Cross School District had to go to a big referendum because they, not too many years ago, they had put off a lot of maintenance and things. And so they were hearing about that two years ago. And they're seeing that, ooh, now Holman is talking a little bit about the same, but we don't want to go down that same road. And I think that says, you know, we're trying to be proactive versus reactive. I quote the same question with Al as I did the other with D and F. Is Al, Al is kind of the same as D. That's P? <coughs> as D. <coughs> Why the district coming for more operational money? We're coming, we're coming to operation money because, because we need dollars for this or we need dollars for that. Then you go to the next question, what would you use the referendum dollars for? Well, just the answer is a D. 
I mean, you could a you could answer the. See, now I would go the other way. I would say the L first, and then the D. Why? Because what you're doing, well, why? Yeah. Why do you need that one? I see him. I see him connect a little. Connect the ice cream. You say I'm, this I'm taking that as a suggestion that administratively we've done a pretty good job on this because there should be a natural link between yeah. these things. Yeah, really. The yeah. worst thing for a referendum, in my mind, would be to have disjointed thinking. What this doesn't fit with your rationale for why you need the money and how you're going to use the money. There. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. It should be the same answer. If you're going to throw stuff same into that, you might also then want to look at I. Who was involved in determining the needs? And the very first bullet talks about all the factions. And the very first word is community. Mm -hmm. Community, parent, and staff. So when you're looking at why we're finally getting to this point, it's we're listening. We have asked in the past what our community needs, what our parents need, what our staff wants, what our administration needs. We, at, we got that input. And the input is already there. It's not just your school board asking for this or your administration today. It's based on <coughs> things that we know. We go to our, our specialty people in busing and technology and buildings and grounds and whatever. And we also have gone to our community. And what we're asking for represents what we learned that they believed was a good quality Yes, <laughs> this is what we want. It's more the bottom up instead of top down. It, it very much is, and I, I believe <coughs> that's important. We're able to say then, if, if, and there will be, because it's a referendum and it's, times are hard, and so people will not want to give any more than they can, but we're able to say, if somebody asks, well, why are you deciding to do this? We're able to say, well, it's based on, these different components. Hey, I think there's power pointing, there. Thank you for pointing it out because I keep talking about the administrative role in doing this. That didn't mean a bunch of administrators locked themselves in a room with no input. This meant that we went back and said, if the board approves this goal that talks about generating more money, what have we been told? How will we serve our community? Right. What has our community told us is important? And it was that foundation that developed this. And I, I not, think that, that not really Dr. Is, Carlson saying, oh, right. how about this? I think that's a school board's job, is to support our administration, who are my educational leaders. But it also is to support my community. And in this common belief. And so that when I vote yes or no, I know that I'm voting yes for my school, and I'm also voting yes for my citizens. And I believe that that piece in number I with a faithful vote. I mean, these kind of needs have been identified not only by the school board or administration, but by the strategic planning process that we did and our committee work. You know, we've had the facility buildings and grounds committee come to us and say, we need to increase the dollars or this is going to happen if they come a couple times and said that. And so technology as well. We've approved a technology plan that we haven't provided the dollars to, to do, but yet we approve that plan. And um, so it's not, and we've got a technology committee that has been helping to, you know, provide that plan. And so it's not um, something that has just come out lately. This is something we've been hearing about for a few years. So it's aligned with who we are and what we've said is important in the past by multiple stakeholders. Right. So while we didn't really rehearse and practice specific time limits on each piece, but we probably are going to kind of encourage us to maybe move uh, on. We can always come back depending on time that's left. <coughs> <clears throat> so what I flashed over here now is number two. If we're ready to the question number two that the board was given, and Dr. Carlson will now distribute the board compiled input on question two.
hopefully this looks something like what you were just giving. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit if I can get the, so you can kind of fit it all on one screen. Uh, all what's going on here. No. Uh, no, okay. Yeah, I think I got it. <laughs> so, all right, so somebody can do our proofing right away to make sure we got the right questions with the right letters here. That was very helpful last time. Um, so, the activity with this one. Suggested activity. Could be small groups, but let's see here. Board members are given three dots. Ask them to place a dot next to the uncertainty. Are we on uncertainties? Yes. That are of greatest importance to them. And then what we do is we'd select the three that received the most votes and ask board members to work through a large group or a small group, create a written record describing the nature of this uncertainty, what it is about this that makes creates the uncertainty, and how to address that uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And so that'd be the idea. Now, I think if we've done our work right, these are an exact match <laughs> to those. And so then there's this idea of dots. Yeah, well, you know what we Did talked we about that. that. You can decide that. Do we, the colors have significance? We said you could. <laughs> okay. If someone believed one was really, really critical to address, put all three on one. Kind of burning your opportunity to say something else is in order, but if that's how you feel. There's your, you guys are going to share those. Okay. I don't want to share. There's nothing magic to the colors here. Oh, there's yeah, another one. You just need three. So we got to go put up there on the, on the board? Yeah. No, you get three. I, you, there may be more than three on there, but only, only please, only three. use three. You're on the honor system here. Just because you have four, Mr. Menninger doesn't. Yeah. I, can't, yeah. I can't use them all? <laughs> <laughs> I got to put next to that. So you get what we're doing here. We're just trying to get some idea of which of these are most <laughs> important so that we can have some discussion here around those that are uncertain as you think most need most attention. Look at the comments from your fellow board members, because those might be helpful to you in deciding which of these items we need to spend time on tonight. Remember, comments like they're your own. So whenever you're ready, you can work individually, small groups, however you're comfortable, talk with one another. The back are here uh, throughout. Um, so uncertainty. Yeah, identify three question and answers that leave you with uncertainty. Well, whatever you think uncertainty means, I suppose. Gives you concern. I would just you say your, your responses were a little different on uncertainty. And it, it ranged from what well, we took from maybe you aren't quite understanding the question or the comment itself. Or you're not certain of really the intent of it. So it just, it just it was a little different. We can use more than one dot on one, right? That's what yeah, I'm Yes, to you, yes. Stack the deck. Yes, you may. <laughs> dot one up with all three if you'd like. Only Yeah. 
Christina? I have this. Give myself another 15 minutes. I love our food stuff. We're so lucky. I like to go early because then the other dots don't affect me. No, I'm looking at the dots and things burn. We try to have round up all same color. So some people have been selling my extra food dot for a dollar. I turned my back. I tried giving it away to Gary. Even he wouldn't do that. No. Because he's, he stoops low. Well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Maybe he'll take my chair. Hey, Gary. Gary. Hey, Gary. What? <laughs> everybody everybody <laughs> down? No. What? I'm going to put some totals on here. Oh, just coming to the I don't know if I've seen that bystander is awesome. Are you cold? I'm cold. 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 <laughs> that doctor on TV, that was the first thing he said. Cold. The first thing he said. Oh, the top the 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 guy was on and he had cold in his acronym. The second, I don't remember what the C was. Maybe it was cover up or something, but you should always have a hat on. This one? It doesn't have to be this one. <laughs> it should fit, though. It should fit. It's got the it ears fit. and the fit. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little tight. Stretch it out. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then Christina, as we talk here, she's going to try to capture over there uh, kind of a summary of the comments. Well, if we stuck to what we had talked about, we were going to pick three. Are, if the referendum is not approved, will my school property taxes go down? G, why not meet the financial needs with improvement to efficiency? And e, how frequently has the school district asked for operational tax increases? Now these are not too far behind, and then as you can see, while these are things that leave with uncertainty. They, the degree of importance or uncertainty is just not as great as those top three. So the idea was then, ask the board members to work, large group, small groups, whatever works, to create a written record describing what it is that is behind this uncertainty and then, the most important thing, well, what are we going to do about that? How are we going to address this uncertainty that we have? And so, Cheryl, I'll leave it to you whether you want to do that as a group as a whole. Or and call it upon the experts if they can help answer. Experts. <coughs> Phone a friend. Call the experts if you need some assistance. And I think there may be multiple reasons why people have identified R. And you may benefit by having a little bit of discussion about, well, what did you mean when you selected R? I think let's just do that as a large group and then we'll start calling people. You want to start with R? Um, Has that received? We'll start with R. <laughs> and ask people, why did you? So those of you, I was thinking, oh, you wanted me to say why I picked R. <laughs> I did, R was one of mine, too. But anybody want to? Well, it seems like the assumption is Gary, Gary. Some information, information Gary. here. I raised my hand. School board norms. Yeah, board norms. 
Put your so, hat on here. <laughs> um, I chose R because I thought that the question, the answer was not worded um, <coughs> in a manner that the general public could understand it clearly. I think that the answer could have been more succinct, but I don't know if that's what you meant by left you with uncertainty. Is that what you meant? By that's that? how you interpreted it. And that's that's how I, I interpreted it. Yeah. I know what you meant. I know what the answer meant, but I don't know that the general public is going to understand that, yeah. what, what the answer was. How was it reading it? Well, read it. It's very wordy. It's very, with all due respect to Jay, because he's very good at his job, but it's Jay's speed. It's, yeah. it's financial speed. <coughs> and I mean that in a nice way. Yeah. It's very... Thank you all. Thank you. I really <laughs> do. <laughs> it's very... I knew what you meant. Sorry, no, no, no. Thank you. Uh, it's a challenging question, honestly, but I think it one is. that needs to be asked and answered. Yep. And but you don't really say yes or no. Huh? Right. It's a yes or no question. I, I can't. I know. Because the board has not yet made a decision. I can only base my response upon the past actions and intent of the school board. And the board's past actions and intent have been to create a stable tax levy. They've never adopted a policy. They've never, never set a specific board goal or measurable target around that. But it has been an operating practice of this board for a long time. Don't give people drops and spikes in their taxes. So, but I can't make the statement that if this referendum passes or doesn't pass, what the board will do with the debt levy. You have used treasurers, multiple of you sitting on the board now, have used the debt defeating strategy to effectively create a level tax impact for the people in this community. But you've never said that's a formal policy. If you took the action to say, regardless of what happens with this referendum, we want to ensure a level tax rate for debt, the answer to this question could be yes or no. You've not done that. I, I can't commit, I can't administratively commit to what you're going to do. But perhaps what we could do is it, uh not a compromise, but as a follow-up, because I, I also believe, like Anita is saying, you as our numbers man have to put this information out there. Even though of all the narrative answered, this question has a black and white, and it's accounting, <laughs> it's yeah. numbers, and yeah. that for many is difficult. So with that said, could there be a follow-up narrative that said exactly what you just said? What I can, what, not I, what we can do is tell you what we've done historically. And here's why. And it depends on what the board decides to do. You know, I mean, those are things that we've done in the past. This is how many years we've, we've done this debt deficiency strategy. And here's so why we've we done solutions, it. Okay, let's hear from the rest of the board who picked that and why they picked that. So Gary, I know you were wanting to. I don't want to know. But <laughs> 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 well, mine was the same reason exactly what we were just talking about, and that was, it depends. It, it depends on this or depends on that. So it's kind of a question that could be answered yes or no, depending on the time of day. Anybody know? Because up to this point, up to this point, Everything we talked about on the board said if everything stays the same mm -hmm. and we don't take any actions and we just let everything roll along as it is, yeah, your tax is going to drop. But is that going to happen? I don't know. Right. My recommendation <coughs> professionally to you would be not let it drop because when the next building project comes, you're not going to want to have that jump associated with the next building project. And that's been the long term strategy of the board. And, and I, uh, I had this question, and, and I agree with your comments. It, it is not clear, and I was the one who said, well, I, I don't like the answer because we, we don't know what that strategy will be. And I have long supported that that defeats the strategy and keeping the <coughs> level tax. However, as someone on the Buildings and Grounds Committee, we've also seen those new buildings get pushed further and further and further out. And if we see those buildings that we were looking at 2016, now out into the 2020s and beyond, do we want to continue that debt diffusion strategy for such a long period of time, knowing that that new building is not so soon on the horizon, 
or should we look at this as an opportunity to help some of those taxpayers out there? And we have not had that discussion because our circumstances have changed from that rapidly growing district to seeing that growth slow. So that next building is not as soon on the horizon as, as what we had. And that may change the strategy. And as a board, we've never had that discussion. And I'm not sure you can have that yes. discussion and be certain because what if suddenly growth starts mm -hmm. accelerating? And so the, 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 well, it's a vague so answer because there's so done. many variables in play regarding growth rate in the community mm -hmm. that I don't know you can mm -hmm. give an answer other than the board's acted fiscally in a fiscally responsible manner in the past. You can trust them to continue to do that. Mm -hmm. And I will continue to try to provide the same type of guidance we've used for the last 23 years. Um, but I don't know that you can give a yes or no answer to this. Anybody else? I haven't spoken yet on this one. I think for me, it, I think it is important question and maybe a little unclear only because we keep pushing the fact that if we pass this referendum, we're going to do so in a way that's not going to increase your taxes. And so if we weren't be saying that, making that statement, we wouldn't be then saying, well, if that doesn't pass, then your taxes will go down. So it, it's so related to that. And for me, the most important thing isn't the impact on tax. Don't get me wrong. It's important. But it's not the most. It, for me, it's student-driven. What's the impact on students' educational experience and moment? Are we providing a safe transportation for them to get to and from school? Are we providing safe buildings for them? Are we keeping those up? We've made an investment in the community and then the technology investment in their educational experiences. So for me, that should be the number, what we're really talking about. Yes, we're going to do that with an impact on taxes, but we've always, as Jay said, we've always kept in mind to do it with the least negative impact. So that's not anything new, but I only think this becomes an issue because of the fact that we are promoting the fact that it won't have it, you know, it won't result in a tax increase. I agree 100%. And when we developed this, we knew that there'd be multiple constituencies, some with your thinking, Cheryl, and others, honestly, with quite the other flipped importance. And so it became more complex because we incorporated the idea of the debt levy as well as the operational levy <coughs> delivering a no net tax increase. And that complicated it, but sometimes to get all the things you want in life, it gets complicated. A and it did. If you said, you know what, let the taxes go up because of this, this would be a lot simpler. I just don't think it would be as responsible to present to the public. <coughs> I'm just wondering if in the best of all worlds where you have those on the internet where you have the short answer and then if you want more information, read more kind of thing. You know, I don't want to necessarily pay a lot of attention to this because to me that's not the most important thing in... We've talked about this. If this goes forward and if you start putting information onto a website as a 24-7 easily accessible, do you have like hyperlinks and do you allow things to explode up if this word... I don't connect with this word. I click on the word. Oh, that okay. You know, linking these things. This is exactly what Par Patrick Barlow mentioned at the last finance committee meeting. That exact same idea. I've, I've done. I've read surveys when I've been president of Wahi across the state, talking with different homeowners. Two of the primary things when people buy houses: a clean water. People want water that's safe, a safe drinking water, and a close second is a school system that's quality that they trust that's a good steward of money. And they think they just, they don't want to have to deal with it. They got enough problems in life. So um, I, I think people mind paying a little more. In my opinion, it's one thing to go toward a program that I think is reactive and not helping the community or not helping people. I mean, you can go on food stamps or any a number of pro programs, but if it's a child who's helpless, in many, many regards. I think people are more receptive to that. So what's the, anyone else want to speak to the why they chose this? Because eight, if we have eight, it was like unanimous that this was an uncertain with our student on board. So Agnes, anything you want to add? Or Lisa? No, just kind of a lot of gibberish. 
Okay. So then what's the next step, Jay? I'm sorry. I think well, the next step is to <laughs> how do you address the, the uncertainty and the concern that the group has is it's not a yes or no. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, it can't be yes or no, so help me with how do we address the uncertainties that the board has expressed. Can we acknowledge it by just saying if this is something, uh, without going to a hyperlink, saying um, we understand the question is out there. Is this a yes or no? And we have a lot of empathy, empathy for that. And every year, I mean, whatever words you put it in, every year the finance committee, the school board also says, is this a yes or no? And when you acknowledge someone's question, it takes a bit of the, um, if there is accusation in the question, it takes some of the accusation away. And as soon as you go, yep, you're right, we feel the same way. We so understand. I'm, and Kate, thank you, you came back to help me remember what you said earlier to acknowledge the question, tell the story in a narrative way, and then talk about the measures the board goes through in considering this issue. Yeah, and they're not unlike what our citizens will go through in their mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I want them to see. Yep, we represent you. We're trying to do this for you. Yeah. Part of the vetting process <coughs> on this, too, is to stop having school administrators and board members who know it read it and have John Q. Public read it and say, what Alex said, this looks like some gibber. <coughs> and we need to hear that. We need to hear that. If this is because the intent is to educate a public. If you choose to go down the path of a referendum, you better you'd be ready. You want to mention the historical part that you said? You said historically this is what happened. Now is that going to continue? I'm not sure. But you should mention historically this is what we're doing. And I don't know, I read the, the first paragraph. But then you're getting into all those detailed numbers in the second paragraph. That's where I got lost. Yeah. Okay. We'll compress that so that people only have to look at it at that one. Yeah. So how is this conversation helping you as an individual with trying to move forward in your process with... Oh, well, it's funny because that's, I that's the, the most thought, urgent, yeah. important piece. When I first saw this question, my, my answer in my head went, yeah, it's going to go down. Why wouldn't it? It's going to go down anyway. So then I have to start thinking about it, start talking about it, I said, wait a minute, you're, you're up to the area. The debt defeasance strategy <coughs> the board has used would not result, we would not reduce taxes. We would do right. some debt defeasance right. taxing for the future yep. so that there wasn't this drop before the building came. That's what we would do. Isn't that the premise on which Sand Lake is being paid off a little early? Mm -hmm. Isn't Sand Lake being paid off early? No, Sand Lake's on, on, on maturity versus the date was not. Can I just ask one more question? I want to make sure that if a citizen asks any of these questions, that just like we did right now, the answer we give them is exactly what they would do with their own home, with their own car. That yes, you know what, thank you. We, we have thought of that. We've done that every year. To let them be assured we're thinking the same way. Yeah, you'll catch me using uh, personal life analogies to try to describe mm -hmm. school finance <coughs> many times. I'll tell you, sometimes you'll get burned because how mm -hmm. I think about yeah. um, mm -hmm. operating doesn't include me stopping at Payday USA. Right. That's not me. But Payday USA exists, and there are people in our community who are using it. So the risk I run sometimes with the analogy is I'm talking like, Jay would do, and you know what? That's not everybody. And so I, I caution, we need to be thinking about that, connecting with their personal lives, making school finance, oh, I get it, because that, but it's, there's a risk always with that, too. Yeah, maybe that is stated eventually. I mean, not, not here yeah. by any means, but saying every family has options. Some families are in emergency. Our district is not an emergency because we plan well and we're able to make better choices for a district. If you don't, I don't know. If you don't answer this question, if you don't answer that question correctly, the taxpayer could, in their mind, they say, well, if I vote, if I vote for the referendum, my taxes are going to stay the same. If I don't vote for it, my taxes are going to go down. That's why you have to have the mm -hmm. question there. 
and how you answer it can be kind of doesn't make any difference why would you pass for referendum. Okay. Yeah. I think we need to move on if we're going to move on. So, that would mean G. G. Mm -hmm. Why not meet the financial needs with improvement officials? And you can look at that question and answer in the document if you like. <laughs> I think that. Yes, I think. I think that question we've talked about before is not only efficiency but cuts and other. I thought maybe it should be like uh, cuts, not only improving in efficiency but reductions in costs in general, which doesn't mean just efficiency, but mean. You know what Jerry's doing. He's saying it's not just about efficiency, the other way to do this is to reduce programs. And that we addressed in a different question is what happens if we reduce spending. So we split the two apart, but Geary's pointing out the natural connection link in people's thinking between those two. One, right, efficiency or simply reducing spending. That's not efficiency, that's just reducing spending. We can go on to improve efficiency, you can go on to ever answer that question. But you no know, less cost more money to implement the efficiency changes than it was the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> um, I don't know if I agree with this makes any sense. I, I don't agree with the first part of the answer. I guess I shouldn't say I don't agree with it. I don't get why it's there. Um, I think the emphasis should be in the middle and last section. Um, where it says, you know, 79% um, and 71 Should be emphasis on those and not this up here ranks near both the state and regional averages. That doesn't really say anything to me. You know, near the average or, you know, then what's these for? Um, so the first part, I would be fine or would agree with axing and just starting it with the school board, administration, and staff look to the most effective way to do business. Because we could be doing a lot more with average level spending right. than someone else. And it, when I start reading that, I lose a lot of interest. I'm sorry, we went over <laughs> shopping parts of, at, of the essays in AP Lit today. So, um, um, but the, the central part, that, that's interesting, and those are numbers, those are tangible. You know, that's comparing the region. The first part, you know, <coughs> doesn't just... I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get it. I don't want to squash your baby. This needs to go through more. Alex, don't feel bad about any question you'll ask, because if this gets approved and I get in public forums, you're dishing out baby food right now. Because <laughs> there will be yeah, people yeah. who have yeah. Yeah. real concerns. So this is good. Any others on why you chose that one? G? Then move on to E, I believe. E? Like four, four. Flats. How frequently have the school district asked for operation operational tax increases? That was my three points. Oh, three he points. was really excited about it. Yeah. I saw him put two out of the third. Tom, do you well, history is always a good indication of success. I've always ma made that comment. Um, so how many times have they asked for money? Once. I mean, I don't know. 
I'm, not, I'm new to this whole game. So Why did we lose the ability to just raise the taxes by ourselves? Revenue limits were 1994. Three or 94. Mm -hmm. So it's safe to assume we've only done a referendum once? Oh, no. 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 Oh. I mean, it says... Um, operational tax, operational mm -hmm. cost. Yeah, there's a difference here, and this this uh, this response attempts to get at both. Because the question about how often have we gone to referendum is twofold. One is referendum to build schools mm -hmm. to address the enrollment <coughs> increases we've experienced. <coughs> the second is referendum to operate those schools that you build, because just like putting an addition on the house, there's going to be additional electric, and there's going to be maintenance, and there's going to be so that's a second type. And then there's a third type, which is truly operational to cover new costs, not related to a building, but new cost of operating. And the third one, we've had one. And that was back in 1998, and it had to do with technology. All the other referenda we've had have been to construct facilities and then to operate the new facilities that we've constructed. Test, John, correct? Absolutely. So the answer is multiple. You could say we've only had one for true new operational costs. You could say we've had multiple related to operational costs. Or you could say we've had multiple related to operational costs and construction. The reason I included them all was because some people might be asking this question to find out how many times have you asked us for more money in the form of a referendum, which includes all. How many times have you asked us for true new cost supporting operate Once. So for, when you build a school, that's when you need more money, basically, right? Yep, we bond for the construction of the school. And again, what Jay said, there's, there's typically has been an operational piece to that, linked to the building of the new school, to help run it. And you have to ask for a referendum because you just can't get a tax base to do it, right? That's what's happening this time, <coughs> and that's what happened in 1998 related to technology. These are the only two times those have been advanced. But again, I'm trying to put my Kevlar on because when I get out in the public and if I say only twice, then somebody's going to say, uh-huh, see, they're trying to dupe you. Yeah. I can give you a list of all the referendum questions and times they've come and asked me for more tax money. It depends what kind of referendum you're talking about. That's exactly right. Standalone and building with operational or, yeah. yeah. And unless you reveal it all up front, then you will be discredited and I will be discredited for not being transparent. Been through enough referenda to know that that is likely to happen. I'm trying to protect you if this is what you do. So if we control the question, would we want to change we the question? About how many operational for new cost yeah. referenda we yeah. have? And you've yeah. you batted a thousand referendums? We have had uh, one failed building referenda and the associated operational cost. And why? Well, <laughs> that's as many people as voted yeah. on it. I, I, I can't answer that. I can tell you that it was a construction project for an intermediate level school where we would take the sixth graders out of the middle school and out, uh, I can't remember, it was fourth and fifth, mm -hmm. out of the elementary and create an intermediate instructional delivery that would have created facility capacity at the middle and high school, or elementary school. That's the one that failed. I just don't think they understood it real well. We're pretty confident. Well, there's multiple. That's part of the battle, isn't it? It's communication. <coughs> getting it all out, all out there. Communication is important. As important is identifying truly what the community believes in. And then so, yeah. communication becomes much easier because if you're really connecting with what they believe in. So I think you need to change the question. Because the question as it reads, only the last part that's, you know, that's the question, that's the answer in the last part, the last referendum presented to the public versus that one. That's answering the question as it reads now. I think if you want to get it, you know, all the cats out of the barrel, you should rewrite the question. Yeah. So I get it. Focus on, and if there's two questions or yeah, if there's oh only yeah. one, but have one focusing specific on operational mm -hmm. for additional it and then one about just referendum facilities yeah. related and the operational cost of facilities yes. and then keep it very very simple mm -hmm. i would say there's a lot of words and it kind of sounds like we're hiding something so if it's very 
very cut and dry. But, you know. We'll need to, this goes through that vetting, Alex, again with John to public having some people like that read it because you got to, there's a fine line mm -hmm. here about uh, failure to disclose because then some will say you're not being transparent, but yet putting it in a concise enough way and an everyday language way where people will connect with it. It's, it's, it's a difficult, mm -hmm. it's, it's an, but an important part of a referendum if, if we go down that path. Anything else? Anyone wants to on that one? So that was the top three. Any so others that people want to pull out or? We've got a couple that have three. And remember, this is at this point in time <coughs> really designed to most help the board decide what to do. Thank you very much. You're also in the dialogue, you're helping yourself decide <coughs> what to do. And you're also giving us some input. But this won't be the last chance to address <coughs> these things. If the board does on the 26th approval referendum, we'll be back at this. Mm -hmm. Why is this not clear? Why am I left with uncertainty? And how can we better capture that? I mean, the education environment is, is anything but stable. It's constantly changing. New laws are coming out. It's constantly changing. And I think the schools have to be as proactive. I always, that, I always throw that word out there as possible. So and I, my question was a history question, basically, because I'm still <coughs> in a deep learning curve, and I'm never going to get out of it. So. Uh, <laughs> um, and I just want us to be as proactive as possible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're all in our own deep curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're probably <laughs> going to keep moving. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're dead. No, you know what's going to type? Yeah. Thank you. 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 Jan, do I turn this back on? Does it go to sleep? <laughs> the next section should be a little shorter. Well, we don't need any technology. It's going to work like that. Um, <laughs> I think you've got coming around the responses from the board on question number three. And question number three was identify any Q&A items you believe are not relevant enough to be included in the Q&A document. I want to try again. I thought I'm going to just try powering it up again. Rest. Rest is a good thing. Rest. No, you got tired. This one might go a little bit more quickly. So what would you do? Well, okay. So break up the non-relevant Q and A's into small groups. Well, there's one, there's three of them, and if you read them, I don't know that there's even three. Yeah. The, the the activity then was intended to be. Um, Identify whether the non-relevant items should be deleted, modified, merged, or otherwise addressed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't appear to be that we thought that there were. Right. Wow. More the better, right? Some maybe a bit um, complex and overstated, right. and maybe rearranging, but in terms of relevance, all relevant, just find a way to somewhere else trying to make it digestible. Yeah. Okay. Well, we move on to number four. <laughs> that felt good. This next one's not quite so easy, I don't think. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, so Christina, I was trying to get the PowerPoint back up that would describe what the activity is. This one. I don't know. And um So you got the board feedback on or input on item four. So activity here is board reached consensus on how each important piece of information 
will be addressed by January 12th board meeting. Because if these are important pieces of information board members need and have not yet received <laughs> to make a decision on how to proceed, we, we need to decide who's going to do it, what it's going to be. And on this one, if they get signed to administration, which I think most of them will be, we'll, you're going to have to give us a chance tonight to ask some clarifying questions so that we are responding the way you need information. And as you can see, one of them is kind of long. We made every effort to do our own interpretation of that and consolidate it <coughs> to a simple point. We felt like we were being unfaithful to the person who submitted it because we didn't, we didn't want to lose the intent by putting our own interpretation on it. So we're going to have to go through each of these item by item, and you're going to have to, as a board, tell us what you expect us to do prior to the January 12th meeting. Fair enough. So Cheryl, you can decide. Do you want to give everybody a chance to read through all of them? Do you want to just start right at the top and start plugging away? Should we go item by item and just start plugging away? So the first one, honestly don't need more information before moving to advance a referendum. We're all aware, or should be, that this has been talked about at the board level for a couple of years now. I don't know if I need to read all of this. I'm anxious to get going, get a committee together, get to work for our students and our community. So... Our interpretation here was that there wasn't really necessarily a task to do here for follow-up, but we just wanted to at least put it down. But this was, oh, did you not get one? Nope. There we go. Yep. So um, whatever conversation you need, but we did not see a follow-up task other than like committee, but we really thought that was, boy, um, we haven't even, the board hasn't even taken action on moving forward yet, so. I was just saying good job. <laughs> I was right. So then the second mm -hmm. bullet is we'd like the following items to be part of the discussion. And this is good not only because of um, our work that we've done with Matthew Fail when we've talked about data that will be helpful in driving decision making kind of thing. <coughs> so I think this is a good um, this exercise, I mean, not just this bullet point, but this exercise is a good part of um, the questions we should be asking ourselves as we are looking for data. So, again, the second bullet is, would like the following items to be part of the discussion. What was the total cost impact of the decision in 2014 on raising the amount and the cost of health insurance? What was the total cost impact on the board decision in 2014 in reducing class size? What's the total increase in number of employees working for the school district? Um, headcount, not FTE, what percentage is this, what's the estimated cost impact of this, and what is the total increase of employees budgeted for 2015, what percentage is this. So these are questions a board member has, and so... And I would just say first, too, that some of these, including these four possible, might end up being additional questions that you may even want for the Q&A, too. So, but, but right now we're going to look for direction specifically. And on some of these, I have some clarifying questions, but. Um. So work for the administration to do related to these four items. And we're ready to, although uh, as Dale said, we need to ask some clarifying questions so we make sure we're properly interpreting these. So for number one, can I ask? Some why don't you, Why don't you? Yeah. And I'll speak to these because I wrote all four of them. So. All right. I will direct okay. my questions <laughs> to you. I'm, I'm not. I'm not ashamed. No. Good questions. So uh, I believe that number one is specifically referring to the district changing its comp, uh, contribution rate for health insurance from. 80% of the premium to 85% of the premium. Yeah, roughly a cost of $276,824. I have the number. I just thought it's good to, to have part as we talk about, you know, we, we, we say how important <coughs> all of these things are. 
but we never had this discussion as an alternative when we were discussing that. And to me, it's if we're saying we've been wise and good custodians, then how we've spent that money needs to be part of the discussion to validate that to the public. So in addition to just the dollar amount, which may be just a dollar amount, it doesn't say why, would you like, would it be appropriate for administration to go back and say, what was the rationale that accompanied that? Absolutely. Like us to draft mm -hmm. something. And put yeah. Just one last yeah. informational thing we had discussion with. Uh, yeah, are we? I mean, it seems like we're bringing up a lot of. You know. So, what's your question, Gary? I'll let Gary answer. Yes, yeah. you stop, stop the process we're doing now to, to take the time and to do due diligence with these. If the board feels it's important enough to do it to use as resources, or does the board feel it's not important enough? So one of so at the last when we met with Matthew Fail, a part of the result of that is a process to determine as we ask for data and information that we would go through a list of questions to identify how important that is to the board as a whole. And is it is it um, data that already exists? And Tim's identified that, yeah, the data already exists. The justification, I think I remember what you used as the justification when you presented that. So it exists, but it would be something you'd have to pull, pull together. This is, this is not creating new data. I believe what yeah. Tim's referring to is existing data. We just have to go back, pull out, and repackage maybe by right. stating it in the form of a Q&A. But then the other question, oh, you just stated Right. But the other question is, is this important, is this an important question to the majority of the board exactly. in order to make this decision? I, I would be bringing up as a point of discussion, so the purpose of discussion, to talk about what we've spent, to consider whether or not we want to spend more. I mean, I'm trying to get to the bottom line. No, I, I, I want to just answer a couple of questions. Number one, I would be very careful about establishing a policy that allows the majority to determine what is and what isn't important because then we become what we don't want to be. And all I have to do to thwart that is go to an open records request. So <coughs> be careful because as soon as we say the majority determines what's important, what have we become? Well, we've Tim, become I think it's in the context. And I know you hate it when we say that, but that's what you're doing. It's in the context you're saying of we're squelching the, time the minority of the opinion. We've been hearing and we've been hearing from administration that when we make data requests, mm -hmm. it's taking more and more of their time to pull that because we don't have anyone um, in charge of that pr primarily. So in, uh, um, and I wish you would have been able to attend that workshop because as we discussed that in that workshop, um, we talked about all of those things um, that as a board, we are a board and we do, um, one of our norms is that we will respect decisions that have already been made. And I think that's what people are getting to here is, this is a decision that's been made, so it, it why is, you know, why is that reflective of a decision we're going to make in the future, I think is what I'm hearing. May I? Because I, I think where Tim's going, at least my interpretation where Tim is going, you're going to be asked this question. You're going to be asked, why has the board made decisions in the past related to how it's using money, rather than setting those monies aside to address this issue? <coughs> and I need to, administratively, and I think you each, are going to need to be prepared to answer that question. And so not just the dollar amount, but why did you do it, so that people at least understand. It, it, to me, it goes to transparency. So where does that stop? Them? Yeah, where does exactly. that end? Because we've made a lot of decisions. We've set aside $100,000 for maintenance, for transportation, for it's technology, for co-curricular. So That's all of those decisions are past decisions. Fair enough. So in bulk, it's that efficiency question, if you put them all together. Kate? 
We see a difference in a couple things here, Tim. Not that any of those questions are a problem for me. The questions that are bulleted are black and white questions. How much was spent? The question that you brought forth tonight is a new question, which is, and what was the rationale? <coughs> I find that that um, is a bit problematic only because every vote I have taken should be questioned with what the rationale was. And I had input, my administration came to me and said, here's what we've decided, here's what we're recommending. Very few times have we not supported what our administration comes to us. Um, so there's, there's that rationale question. But over, I don't know, I'm a newbie, like Tom, and learning curves for three years, I've been making votes twice a month. And my rationale, I feel really good about. But as soon as I bring those four items up for rationale, what's to discourage every single vote I've made in this district, every single vote that we made? So I'm just going to put that out there, that these particular issues to me, in terms of why I voted yes or no on this, are no more important than why I voted yes or no on any budgetary issue. So why not list them all? There, there's just a question I guess I have for you. Well, I'll explain the question, Thank and you. then I will absolutely be done talking tonight because <laughs> I'm going to have to take my case to the public because I see I'm not going to be able to take my case to the board. That being said, the rationale is that do you want a talking point to say why the board did that, or do you want me giving my opinion why I think the board did that? What do you mean by that, Tim? Because I don't agree with this. I don't agree with some of these, and I voted no on them. So if we go out to the public and you say you have to support it as a board member, yeah. but you don't want me to understand the rationale, but then you were given the rationale. I, I guess what I'm going to ask you, though, and that's but maybe Kate, not tonight. Kate, Kate. Um, okay, sorry. But Tim, we will, we will take this but Tim, to the public for a vote, and I will Let express my talk. opinion to the public. And we'll Tim, see you were given the rationale at the time of the vote, and one of the norms of the board. I really don't want the rationale. I really don't. Dr. Carlson mentioned it. I said, fine. I really could give two hoots about the rationale. So I think it's wrong. So you ask these questions to do what? I don't understand the purpose then. If you know the answer to these questions, the, then the what? The purpose is a... The What's purpose. The bottom, line? the bottom line is I agree with the fact that we need technology. I agree with that. The bottom line is I agree we need to increase in these buildings. I agree with that. I agree with all of that 110%. I also agree that we should not cut anything. The scare tactics about cutting, cutting, cutting are scare tactics. <coughs> but I don't agree we need to expand. And we expanded health insurance last year. We expanded FTE count. We expanded this way beyond the growth of our class size. And then we say, geez, we need this because it's important. It is. It's extremely important. But we have to own our decisions. And if we believe that was the right thing, and we believe that that was the right thing to do, then we should be able to go to the public and say, this was the right decision, we're still out of money, and please give me more so I can support this. But if we don't believe those are the right decisions, then we shouldn't try and hide them, we shouldn't try and mask them. We should say, this is what we did, this is how we spent your money, this is how we did it, and we want you to support that and continue to support us as we go forward. Because I don't believe it's a choice between this and that. And I don't think it's a choice between cutting things. But we always go to polar extremes instead of trying to find a middle ground. And what we had here is an opportunity for middle ground to say, we're not going to cut everything. <coughs> we're not going to cut teachers. We're not going to cut sports. We're not going to cut anything. But we don't have the money to expand and at the same time do all these other important things. That's the point. That's the just of the matter. And what we want to turn this into a debate is, oh, do you believe in the kids or not? No, it isn't that. Do you believe in our buildings need work or not? No, it isn't that. It's a belief that we can accommodate all goals and find a middle ground. That's what it's about. And we fail to see that when we're on a polar end of an issue. But I guess I would say, the only thing I would offer is that these are decisions that have been made. Absolutely. And the, I would say the majority of the board is not running from these decisions. We support these decisions. But I personally am having difficulty understanding how they tie in with the decision to 
go to referendum because they are decisions that were made at the t at a date certain time. This is a different certain date and time and because I think we'll see that these decisions that we made in 2014 to expand, not to hold anything, not to cut anything, could have potentially paid for all of these things. And, and unfortunately, we should have had this discussion then instead of saying, oh, can we do this? Or, boy, we have this out there that's really important. We chose to separate those debates. But they're intro intertwined. I believe these questions will be asked whether Tim asks them tonight or somebody asks them at a referendum forum. I agree. And they'll ask for the rationale. My belief is you better be just ready for those and just give the straightforward answer why the board did this. Okay. So we'll be we asked. Know, I think Tim's just representing the constituency. Do we know what the answer to number two is? We already decided we know what the justification, the number one is, and what the number is. What about number two? Is that something we know? The impact, the total cost? But, well, um, part, yeah, we need to be part more of my <coughs> clarification on that is um, specific to the K-3 yes. change in class size decision. We, I can, that, that won't take much. Uh -huh. um, and, I can. And on this, we're talking specifically the one-year <coughs> cost that year. Yep. In the next question, the rationale behind it is if our class, if our, if our pupil is growing at 1.6%, but our staff is growing at 8%, we already have a very excellent teacher student or to pupil ratio or in EA to pupil ratio. We have an excellent. So we should not be seen, or if we do, why is it? We'll have to explain it. Why is our, our staffing numbers increasing at a greater rate than the students because people are going to want to know that and we have to be able to explain that if if give us a shot at the first question and if there's like i did you know there's i'm tr then trying to answer the next question that comes let us start with the first question and i think what we're saying is the k3 decision 2014 and teachers so, 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 cost. so that'd be the wages and benefits related yep. to those positions. And we had that numbers at our meetings. I mean, I could go back. Because I think time most, we uh, by and large, that's, that's what's going to it's going to be. It's all in the meeting notes when can we approved all that. Can I ask a question, Tim? Mm -hmm. Just from my perspective, I, I feel like a lot of the focus has consistently been with you, particularly, is, is there's a lot of scrutiny when it comes to staff staffing teachers in particular and I, and I get it it's 80 percent of the budget <coughs> I get so there's it. gonna be I yes. totally get it you know but I also think there's a lot of cost that goes into the building and grounds and all those other kinds of material kinds of things and I'm just curious as to like how come that is such the focus for you because it's 80 percent of our budget yeah. it's the majority of it so I mean to it, it, it's no different than work. If I want to adjust the budget, if I want to, if I want to try and make my budget work, <coughs> do I look at post-it notes that cost me five cents, or do I look at my biggest line item for budget? It's just simple budgeting. You know, it, it's you know, that's really and, what and it I, is. I get that, and I that's why it's it's nothing more than that. I, I get that, but I think the problem is the people that teach our kids. That's kind of the base part of our goal. Which is it, it is absolutely and learning. I and do that's not where you should be heavily spent on your budget because that's your investment. I absolutely agree with that. You know, but I've I've not heard one other thought from you about ways to conserve money if that's really what it is about dollars and cents and that's the most important thing. There's been no other idea, thought, or perception that I've ever heard about what else can we look at as far as spending you know, co-curricular activities or something else, but it's always coming back to the most important resource that we have, the direct connection and link with our kids and the human contact part of it um, with our kids and not even looking at the individual needs of, the, of what the student, it's not just a student per, student per teacher ratio. I mean, there's so many factors that go involved in making those decisions. I think if you look at the record, I've never once advocated a cut to any of that. I, I voted for this class size reduction. 
And I supported that. I mean, I voted for that. I know that in discussions in, in the new BIM with this, I know that in those, some of those discussions we, we talked about how we are just, you know, expenses and revenues are here and they're not, we're not making any headway to some degree. And I know that's not everything in the world, but it is something because this is a business to some degree. So I just, uh, as a business person, I can see the value of not minimizing our assets by any means, but of just looking long term on where we're going. We, uh, I just, it would be a real shame if for some reason some, for example, some other voucher school came in here and took a third of the students away. Then what would you do? I mean, then what are you going to do? I, I mean, I'm just, that's not going to happen, I know, but we got to be proactive. We just have to look at things, uh, harder decisions. I didn't vote for the, I didn't vote to know what the, uh, with the uh, health care thing too. I didn't think it was, in my opinion, I agree with Lisa totally, but I uh, we want an environment that I think where we empower the teachers possibly, or I, all the staff with making decisions on what is there. Maybe hold our health care costs down. I'm 51 years old. I don't need, you know, child, I don't need, I don't need chiropractor. I don't need um, <coughs> dental or what, uh, orthodontics anymore. Maybe I can get a program where I can save some money there and I don't know. I just uh, I think if we empower the staff more, I think that sort of a route as opposed to a holistic health plan, I think that would be better. I think we could save money and we could <laughs> dump it more back into bonuses and technology and things that make the school system better. Well, and I, I just want to say that um, one of the things we learned with Matthew was this, <coughs> one point of questioning old decisions that were made that we've agreed as a board that we are going to, whether we're on the majority or the minority of decisions that have been made, we're going to support those publicly <laughs> and as a board. So it's one thing to ask these questions for the purpose of saying these are questions that are going to be asked by the public, so we need to be prepared and we need to have the justification out there and be prepared for those. It's another thing to, to maybe do that, and I don't know, Tim, I'll tell you, my reaction was, that you were do asking these questions for the purpose of impeding progress on, on the referendum for a negative reason, because you didn't support some of these decisions. You did some of them, but not all. Um, and so I think maybe that's it in the, in the delivery or, or whatever of how those questions are. Um, for me, I can totally swallow, OK, let's have what was the cost? What's, what was the administrative justification? Doing it in that kind of context. but. You know, I think we've agreed that we're not going to go back and continually visit old decisions that we didn't agree on in, as a negative, you know, in a negative form or purpose. So I no, think that's... And, and I don't think we do. But if, if I go, um, if, if my kid comes to me and says, I made a decision on how I spend my money, <coughs> and now I need more, I tell them, you made choices on how to spend your money. <laughs> you know, now obviously, will I let them live in the street because of the choices they made? No. Does that mean I don't care about my children? No. But in order to teach them proper budgeting, they have to live within their means. Dad is not an unlimited resource to come to every time they've spent more money than they have. So they have to live with the choices that they make. Now, I will not let them sleep in the gutter because of their choices, but I'm certainly not going to give them access well then, then the public would, would defeat the referendum i don't see what the issue is right. you put it before them and say I, sp I spent our money if you put it that way i spent my money i need more money to to support what i want to do can i have it or not well, they say yes or they say no or the issue is too we also don't have money taken from us. quite honestly this public member does not support the referendum are, are these are points going to be presented yeah, to the public right. Uh, are these points going to be presented to the public, or are we just coming up? Yeah. Oh, okay. So these are, and that's maybe more to what Dale was wondering, is what do we need to do before taking action? And I think what I'm hearing is that the board, there is an interest in some of the board in hearing the answers to these. But it isn't necessarily something we're going to be putting out and promoting in the brochures or no. whatever. But this no. is more no. of a question that the board I would say we should put that on. 
Right. No, I know. I know. Okay. Kate? Okay. Very briefly, you have just said you did not support the referendum, and thank you for finally just saying yeah. that. Six of us do. And we're going to go forward and we're going to ask for a referendum. The questions you have brought up, I will be ready to answer. And I will be ready to tell my citizens why I voted and why that vote was a good vote and why my administration. But I thank you for finally just coming forward and saying, well, I've been pretty hey, I'm not going to support it. Uh, it's like the elephant in the room. So once that's out there, okay, then I'll be prepared for that. I, I have Because there's that. a lot, of, well, no, you just said it. And there's a lot of citizens who probably won't support it either. So, okay, I'm ready for that, Tim. I'm ready for it. I, I, my comments, just I just want us to be as productive as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have to be on top of things, and we have to show we're good stewards. And I do think we, I haven't met anybody in the school system that I don't think doesn't believe 100%, 110% what they're doing. But, uh, I mean, we just have to be, I just, I'll leave it at that. Okay. So if I could clarify, three, yeah. it, is, it was teachers or all employees? Total increase number of employees. Okay. It should just be an FT count. Melissa should, you should have that very Should easy. be FT? No, not FT, head count. Head. Just how many. Okay. I got to ask do some we have clarifying two, questions. 1,020 versus. Okay. 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 So the data is important. Just so it's regular, part and full time, but you wouldn't include and substitutes. It, they are on the payroll. If you would like for the benefit of the group, because I know it's getting late, I'd be happy to take this with you one off because okay. the group is apparently not interested. So. <coughs> Dr. Carlson, I'm going to ask because a couple board members are asking me going back to the meetings with Tim or with Matt. So if the you know, we did, and Tim, it's, it was something that I think we as a board agreed to. Is, right, but we as a board agreed to that data requests, again, so one of the questions is, how difficult is this question, does it exist, that kind of thing. Um, if it does exist, then that's one thing, and we decided then it's you know, okay, but we're really looking at data that's going to take me and Jay Clark is going to have to stop what he's doing and spend two weeks or eight hours or whatever it is to be able to draw that data. Or Jan Wee or anyone um, is going to have to take time to draw that data. And that the, in that case, if it was going to be a lengthy uh, change of schedule kind of thing, that it would be something the board would discuss and have to agree upon. Um, to draw that data or not. And I know if, what you're saying, if, Tim, if you can just do it as a, as a um, open request, open mm -hmm. records request, but in the spirit of working together as the board, if I any think of, we if, were... We if any of this data is difficult to retrieve, then we have some, some systematic mm -hmm. issues. Because well, we should know how many employees are working at the school district on 1114 and how many are working on 1231. That should not be hard data. I have not I'm asked for not anything. Not necessarily, I'm just saying, if it would and, be difficult to retrieve that And because that. the majority appears to have a different opinion than the minority, the majority is trying to thwart the minority's access to information. I, I think the issue is that Tim doesn't agree with him referendum and he wants the data to support why we shouldn't move forward with the referendum, correct? That we've spent our money, it was a bad decision and now we need I to support it, so I'm not saying it's a bad decision. I say we have to own the decision. <coughs> we have to own the decision. You, I was you said they didn't support the I don't support the referendum. Right, and right. I'm not saying I didn't support how this was spent either. I'm not saying that that was a bad decision. But how is this? So I mean, going back to the questions from the, I don't I, have the form in front of me, but is this difficult information or does this data already exist? Are we talking about number three? Yes. If I have some clarifying questions. Yeah. It's just it very simply how many employees were working here on 1114 and how many were working on 123114? Let me just illustrate. Okay, so yeah, just 2014. Do you want, do you, you, you gave the dates. That's, yep. a, that's helpful. Yep. And do you want substitute employees included in that? Substitute? Yes. Oh. If they're, I mean, if they were replacing it full time. No, nope. I'm just talking about. No. Thank you for the clarification. Do you want co-curricular positions reported? No. Nope. Thank you for the clarification. So these are the kinds of things that I would need to know to determine what's the workload associated with yep. this. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Here's how many distinct people are working for this. Gotcha. 
you do two jobs. I think you're talking about positions. regular full and regular part-time positions. Yep. That is correct. So it's not hard data. That. that is not overly cumbersome data to collect. But, but I do think it's important. And what's concerning is, is the people in their effort to advance their position want to afford information. And what's important to the public is to show that we're good custodians. And are we spending frivolously or are we not? And if we're not spending frivolously, then we should be able to validate okay. that. Well, I, just have to, I, I just have to say something, because I haven't said a lot. I'm not so saying we are. the we people are. in an effort to thwart, who's thwarting information? I'm being told I can't ask these questions. Tim, you're, you, we're asking you to follow the path that has been set forward by Matthew Fail, who we hired as a consultant to have our board work together. And you don't bother to come that to the workshop, so you that is, know. That is such an illegal process. What? Oh to come to a workshop where everybody no. else is expected to go and take off time from their families and their jobs and their lives and make a priority to work together as a team? I mean, did did that just follow our process, norms? Process, I don't go to. I'm not uh, really. It's putting on really. Uh, I will continue to say prayers. It, it's it's a shame that what we have here okay. is a situation where we've hired a consultant to tell us what we want. That says the majority has the ability to control everything, Tim, including what the minority this. can ask. I can't railroad mm -hmm. them. Who's being railroaded? I'm being told I can't ask this information. No, you're not following the rules that we all agreed on. The majority of the board take over everything. So, Tim, but so if the majority words, makes like rules that are unreasonable, should the minority have to follow them? You followed what's going on in Madison. Should the minority have to follow all the rules because they make those rules in Madison? Should they? The Should they just fall in line and say, absolutely, that's the way it is. Good, good for you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. No. They you have ability have to, to disagree. Them, unfortunately, until they're elected in the majority. I, I think but, we're getting off but track there, a But there's bit. the ability <laughs> to disagree. That's true. Yeah. I think so, too. And so let's, the conversation has gotten it, off track. Yes. And I think let's go back to it, these it questions. Is, and it is very un that we have we become will continue a very to have a discussion body. so Tim please if we can just move on so the number the increase the number of employees that budgeted for 2015 is that a number that is difficult or it's, it's already okay what is the total increase in number of employees oh, what I need to know to proceed is nothing okay. the one dollar today versus four dollars tomorrow makes sense as long as we have a strong valid <coughs> reference source <coughs> so is there anything you need on that no in fact um, I'm, I'm reaching out right now to some of the sources that we've used to get that to get some validation so okay. yeah, the process yes. that. I think the questions the answers are sound and more reactive in nature I think taxpayers would be more open to the referendum if the district provided talking points and goals along with the needs. I would not say the talking points are reality. They are wishes and dreams because school district dreams big. How is technology going to help the empower, empower students and make them more responsible for their own success? The promotion helps students prep for realities of college and work life. And so this is all under one bullet. Bullet, yeah. It's but I think good. breaking it up, I don't yeah. know, maybe breaking it up into paragraphs might be a good idea. It's, there's, there's a lot of content there. Yeah. So is this, someone's ringing. Um, so talking points and goals along with the needs, I think those would be something, wouldn't they, that we would come up with if we pass and decide to do a referendum, correct? I or is there some interest in having those before we make the decision? It, it seems to me that this is something that the educators would be uh, would be a good idea. They would, I, mean, I just, I'm not, this is my question. Okay. And I, I think that the people in the field are the ones that have the great ideas. I know I've talked with teachers who rewrote classes because mm -hmm. students don't pass. Mm -hmm. and they just say, well, I'm just going to rewrite it myself and we'll make it work. So I just think that there's a lot of potential of good, <laughs> good information that we could, uh, we could share with the general public. But I, again, Cheryl, I don't have the, the background in so in order to help you make your decision, do you feel that talking points and the goals 
the needs? You've got enough information on that, or do you need more information in that area? I think the general public would need more information. Okay, but not, for not you, me. you're okay. Okay. So then, moving on, how is technology going to help empower students, make them more responsive, responsible for their own success? Um, the promotion helps students prep for the realities of college work life. Again, do you think this is something that public is needs, or is this something you need information that you may need in order to help you make your decision? I think isn't that Dale what you're looking right. for? It's it's something that I again it's I uh, I've seen this in action okay. in the public school system with the communication system with the teachers or with the parents and it, it basically says um, students you need to you know this is what's going to happen to you next year when you start a flat roller or UW Madison you need to I, I just think that if we had I don't know some ways to I'm not saying something I do next month or anything but it's just something that we should think about as technology down the road. So if we do move forward for the referendum, though, and say yes at the end of January, uh, because I kind of am on board with you here, it's, it's one thing to say students can really use this technology, but I know we have examples in classrooms and things like that that we could share with the public to show them what is being done in a classroom and that maybe a video or a snippet or something like that could be used. But for me, I don't need more information on that at this point, but if you do or other board members do, to help you again, help you make that decision. Yeah, I, um, I, I think I, uh, I've seen enough of it, mm -hmm. enough um, initiative that I'm <coughs> not concerned about it, but I just would like us to think that we are thinking that way as forward thinking as a board. And is this and middle paragraph too. yours too, Tom? Pardon? This, so you want money for technology, is this you too? Yeah. Okay. So to me, it is a continuum of your other questions that you've asked. What are our goals and dreams of the money? I mean that, if he's asking it, someone else might be asking it, but I think we answer it. Yeah, hearing what Tom has said now, I hear him saying, these are things I get. We need to do a better job of educating our public <coughs> if the board approves <coughs> That's what I hear you saying over and over again. Yeah, I, I've had, I mean, I, I think about a little more, I've had a lot of talks with a lot of homeowners, with a lot of young families, and, and, and they're using technology all the time. And I just think this is something that, I, I think it's really paramount that we move this direction to some degree and yet I've seen the other extreme where you, all you are is isolated doing computer things and, and you've got to have a social interaction I've um, so there's a there's a mix there where you come together and 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 maybe you can have a situation where you're worse it could be more of a <coughs> students would do some things in a different way I don't know I I, um, I, I just see a lot of technology. I, I see a lot of parents. I see a lot of talk to a lot of students, and this is a constantly moving target. So um, I wish I had a more con concise answer for you. But I think they're getting where they need to go between now and the next board meetings. So. Yeah, and it's not like something you gotta. Yeah, you know, <coughs> we're gonna get these three bullet points, and if they don't come through within six months, we're in trouble. You know, yeah. it's no, it's it's a wish list. You, yeah, because technology isn't the same and. As long as we think this way, I think we're we're thinking the right way. That's a big point, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think from day one when I was on board and met with Dr. Carlson and other people um, addressing what you're talking about, when we look at wishes and dreams and if our dreams are big, we have brought up the fact that we have a really diverse socioeconomic group of students and they want equal opportunity for our students with devices and such. And this brings some equal playing field. And so that to me is, is it, it could be called a dream that's big, but it also is a dream that is normal. It's medium. <laughs> it compares to where other districts are going to. And so that question, if that comes up, that would be one of my responses is that, yeah, maybe you could call it big if you want to, but this is where we as a country want to take our kids and our school district and Holman is looking ahead to do that to 
level the playing field for every student who comes to our district in middle school and high school, that they have that. Um, and the second thing is just in terms of the social part of it and what we're doing with it. Um, if Jan has so many stories. If you've been out in the schools and you've visited, I've seen what our teachers are doing. So perhaps that is a cool thing to put out there, that when you go and see what's happening with these kids interacting and programming, and they're like, what, eight years old? Eh? <laughs> you know, the ones who are 16 and 18 are even more profound. So I agree that maybe that might be a good, maybe there's a presentation eventually when we do go out to the public that is a, a video presentation that shows the need somehow, that makes it tangible. Well, there's um I mean, last quick thing I'll say, I know we're time, short on time a little bit, but I, mean, I came in the email today about some accountability bill where you're going to where you're going to measure schools a lot more. I have I, I have nothing wrong with performance and measuring any of that, but you have to have it in the right context. You really do. I mean, when a teacher has a morning class, a sports afternoon class, I mean, who knows? There's too many variables, and so this type of mindset where it's not. Well, there's a bad teacher. He's bad because he'd get his students to get bad grades. Okay, well, he's a loser then. That's shoot, go out and shoot him. No, you know, you know, you know, you know there's a lot more to it maybe. I'll hold it. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? I think, it, I think the parents are, the parent is, uh, parents don't take responsibility at the time. And I know that's another whole other subject, but um, uh, it's, uh, I think, this type of mentality may address that legislation that is more than likely going to come down the pipe. Okay. Sorry. Dr. Carlson? Well, thank you. I think we did work on question four. The only remaining piece really was to, I guess, Jay, as we bring that to a close, but then we actually don't want to forget the actual two questions, the draft of the questions that uh, would be uh, Huh. Working on um, that, you actually, it's part of what, B or so on the. You've seen the two questions, <clears throat> the drafts. We continue to look, we continue to uh, work with legal counsel. That has not been finalized, but we will bring that forward on the 12th next Monday. And, um, but I encourage you to continue looking at that. And if there are, we would be really looking for Monday night part of the discussion uh, in your decision to whether or not to go forward. Also the, the phrasing of the questions because ultimately on the 26th, as you make a decision as a board to move forward or not, part of that is also approval in moving forward, if that's the decision, of the two questions and what do they look like. So we still are waiting to correct final feedback from legal counsel on the questions. We hope for Monday night to have that. <coughs> so thank you for the input. It will help us. And we need to be helping you too, because each of you will be asked to talk <coughs> on this issue. And we need to be comfortable administratively. It's our job to make sure that you're informed and can cast your vote uh, on how we proceed. So I think the dialogue's been helpful in that regard tonight. And given us some homework. Yep. And we're here, so please communicate with us. So, anything else to come before the board? I would just like to ask that in the future that we are open to people who disagree, that we respect people's opinion to disagree, and that we as a board please do not go down a path of trying to thwart open information, discussion, and very <coughs> And that's all I ask. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll respond to that, and that is, if the board, if the majority of the board feels that the, if say for example, uh, not the minority, but somebody on the school board wanted to know how many teachers were left-handed this week, Jay is not a single board member's resource. He's the whole board's resource. So the whole board should decide whether his time is used wisely or not. I agree with that. So if you ask, if somebody asks for something like. <coughs> We'd like to know how many teachers have one so shoe size shoe different than the other side of his foot, or you know. And that's, that's, that's you know, what uh, we're talking about. That's what we're learning about. 
Exactly. If you, if you ask that kind of stuff, you say, Theory. if they're your kind of stuff, we're going to say, sure, of course. Of course you're going to get that information. But you're drawing the line where either all, either every one of my requests are vet or none of them. That's you're not the case. The if it's reasonable, of course it's going to be given to you. But if it's not reasonable, and the board as a whole does not think that it's worth the time and effort for him to spend three weeks of his time <coughs> doing a thing to have to do for us in order to do that for the person requesting it, then the board decides that. Well, that was a very eloquent <coughs> way yes. of explaining kind of the process that we were talking with with Matt <coughs> Kale. And so I think at that we will just just let you dissect that a little bit and, and we will I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So is there a sec second? Second. All in favor? Right. No. Aye. I want Close a recording. No. Okay, we are adjourned. I, I do want to say, Gary, I don't appreciate the belittling comment because I was not asking ridiculous questions. That wasn't a belittling comment that wasn't a belittling at all. About about the fact that asking how many are left-handed it trivializes the importance of the question. But Tim, to some of the board members. Today, I think I have mentioned just a personnel issue. Yes. I would like your consideration, if you can make it work, for a closed session at 6 o'clock prior to the board meeting, because our your attorney would be present as well. Okay. So Are you going to want this? I'll have Christina follow up. I'll have Christina follow up. And, uh, that's, that's kind of an FYI. Yeah.